Hey folks, Dale Davidson here, the VA guy, dear VA guy. Glad you are here today. Hey, the topic today is you must still be the veteran spouse on the veteran's death to be entitled to VA benefits. To qualify as a veteran surviving spouse, you as a claimant must be able to show that you were the valid or deemed valid spouse of a veteran at the time of the veteran's death. In addition, the surviving spouse may have to satisfy one or more of the following additional requirements. There's a one year marriage or deemed valid marriage. We'll talk about that because there's some exceptions to that. Continuous cohabitation with the veteran during the marriage or deemed valid marriage. And there was no remarriage after the veteran's death except in limited cases of accrued benefits. This third requirement really gets a lot of people, so we're going to discuss that in more depth. Additionally, just know that in limited circumstances, remarriage may not bar a surviving spouse from death benefits. However, the surviving spouse, on the day that the veteran passes, has still got to be married to the veteran. We're going to talk about this, so stay tuned. So to establish the relationship and expedite the resolution of, of your claim, and we're talking about the surviving spouse's claim here, the surviving spouse should submit the application, usually it's the uh, 534 easy, uh, to the VA certifying that the claimant was married on the day that the veteran died. So you give them a copy of the veteran's death certificate, maybe give them a copy of the veteran's DD for DD-214, the discharge papers, uh, maybe a copy of the marriage certificate, and any other documents you might have as proof of marriage. Marriages are deemed valid. What does that mean? So the VA may determine that your marriage, that a marriage type relationship is deemed a deemed valid marriage, even where you don't have a marriage certificate. Okay, even where there's no legal marriage created under state law. This is called common law, okay? So the deemed valid marriage rule may apply where the VA determines that there would have been a valid marriage, a marriage certificate, but for the existence of a legal impediment. So we have a common law or we have a same-sex marriage, okay? Now, same-sex marriages are now recognized in all, all the United States. So let me give you an example of that. So a deemed valid marriage may exist where a person lived with a, vet, with a veteran, so the claimant being the surviving person, okay, for a period of time in what the person sincerely believed to be a valid common law marriage. But because in that state they didn't recognize common law marriages, they weren't really married. Now, uh, there's some, off the top of my head, there's just a few uh, states with common law marriages, Colorado, Iowa, Texas, Kansas, and there's some others. As a general rule, the surviving spouse must have been married to the veteran for at least one year prior to the veteran's death to qualify for DIC, death compensation or survivor's pension. Okay, now we mentioned that earlier, but there are some exceptions to this rule. The one year rule doesn't apply if the marriage to the veteran occurred before or during the veteran's service or if the couple had a child at any time. This one year rule requirement does apply in cases of common law marriage. Additionally, the VA has recognized that the one-year rule may present an unfair, they call it a legal impediment to same-sex surviving spouses. So again, that's that all went away in 2015. So we're not really worried about that at this point in time. What the VA looks at is they may accept the written statement of the claimant's marriage to another individual as proof of the existence of a relationship. So let's say that 
you sincerely believe that you were in a common law and that uh, you lived as, as a couple, but you don't have a marriage certificate. So you get statements from all your family members, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, uncles, who are friends, saying, yeah, they, were, they held, them out, held themselves out as a married couple. I had this come up years ago, and this, is, this was a special situation where a veteran and uh, the spouse were married more than once. In this case, they were actually married three times to each other. Married, divorced, married, divorced, married, and uh, then he eventually passed. So, so where the surviving spouse has been legally married to the veteran more than once, the date of the original marriage will be used determining whether the statutory requirement as to the date of marriage has been met. So, for example, if a veteran and the veteran's surviving spouse were married in January of 2022 and the veteran died in July of 2022, they don't meet the one-year requirement, okay? So, the surviving spouse would not be characterized as a surviving spouse for VA purposes. However, in our case, the veteran and the veteran spouse had been previously married to other separate occasions, okay, and had commenced years before, let's say it was back in uh, 1970s, 2010, whatever it was. So whenever the marriage, whenever there was a previous marriage, then that earlier date will be uh, the one that the VA uses. So requirements of continuous cohabitation. Well, what does this mean? So the VA says, look, if you're the surviving spouse, then you have got to have continuously cohabitated with the veteran in order to receive veterans benefits. So this requirement does not mean that the veteran and the claimant, the surviving spouse, had to live together for every minute of their married lives. Married couples, sometimes they separate, sometimes they go on separate vacations, so they're not living necessarily living together every single minute, uh, but that is uh, inconsequential. So let's say that uh, a veteran and the surviving spouse uh, separated during their marriage, regardless of who is at fault, it doesn't matter. This doesn't count if the parties were no longer estranged at the time of the veteran's death. Uh, I would venture to say that if there's a, a uh, petition for uh, separation or divorce pending, that that would, uh, that, that would be a hard, hard thing to overcome. Effective remarriage or deemed remarriage. This is that third consequence that, uh, or exception that uh, really we want to focus on today. Remember the overriding rule. To be considered a veteran surviving spouse, the individual must still be married to the veteran at the time of the veteran's death. No ifs, ands, or buts. Divorce cuts that off, okay? If you're, if you're divorced, legally divorced, and you got a, a decree for divorce, an order for divorce, that, that's done, okay? So it follows that you're going to be denied benefits as a surviving spouse if you legally remarried another individual before the veteran died. So if you married, divorced, and then remarried and the spouse, the veteran spouse was still alive, you know, you're still, you're cut off because of, because of that divorce. But what happens if you remarry after the veteran's death? Well, that all depends. This is where we get into a lot of rules and a lot of a lot of things going on. There's four different categories we're going to be talking about. Okay, Congress, I guess they're trying to uh, justify their existence because they like to change the rules on this. And some of these are pretty screwy and we're going to talk about. It. So the one hard and fast rule that has never ever changed is that the surviving spouse must have been the spouse of the veteran at the time of the veteran's death. Again, if you're divorced on the death of this veteran, you're not the spouse. 
But let's talk about some exceptions, remembering as a rule that surviving spouses who remarried are ineligible for all VA benefits. That'd be surviving uh, survivor's pensions unless they are definitely, expressly, clearly, or specifically mentioned in one of these four categories that we're going to be talking about. So if you're not mentioned in there, you're not the surviving spouse or you're not eligible for VA benefits. But let's talk about, uh, before we get into the four categories, let's talk about uh, annulment and void marriages. Okay, A remarried surviving spouse is eligible for VA benefits so long as that surviving spouse meets other eligibility requirements if the remarriage is voided or annulled by a court with the authority to annul. So don't know how you annul a marriage, don't know how you void a marriage, but uh, if you can get it annulled and the veteran is still alive, you can still receive veterans benefits provided you qualify or, or you meet the other eligibility requirements. Again, keep in mind that even if the potential surviving spouse's remarriage was ruled void or annulled, the claimant, meaning surviving spouse, must have been the spouse of the veteran at the time of the veteran's death. So know that voiding or annulling a marriage is not automatically result in the surviving spouse reviving his or her status and being eligible for VA benefits. That's just not how it works, okay? So let's talk about the categories. Now, this first category is a very limited category, and it's 33, 34 years old, okay? So between basically 1971 and October 1990. If the remarriage or relationship terminated prior to 1990, then you may be entitled to VA benefits, okay? But the following rules apply. So category one, file, if you have a claim filed between January of 1971 and October of 1990, if the remarriage or relationship terminated prior to November 1st of 1990, 1990, then you may be entitled. We're talking about claims for DIC, medical care, educational assistance, housing loans, but not for non-service connected pensions meaning aid and attendance. You've got that date in there that is very, it's hard and fast date, so it's a very limited category. Let me give you an example of how this category can, can arise. Let's say that in between 1971 and October 30 of 1990, uh, you had filed a claim, but it was not finally adjudicated or not finally ruled upon by the VA. Now, <laughs> I don't know how a claim can be held open for 33 years, uh, but let, I guess it's possible, so we're talking about this category. If it hasn't been ruled upon, is still pending, then prospective and retro, uh, retroactive benefits can be owed by the VA to the surviving spouse. I just sincerely doubt that anybody uh, nowadays would qualify for this category one. So let's talk about category two. Surviving spouses whose remarriage or relationship terminated at any time are eligible for DIC benefits as of October 1 of 1998. But there's a one year rule here. So let's go further. So under the 1998 law, remarried individual spouses are eligible for survivor benefits as long as the remarriage has ended. The 1998 law provides entitlement to dependency and indemnity compensation, DIC. 
those benefits can be reinstated if the remarriage ended in by divorce, annulment, dissolution, or the death. Okay, that's category two. Let's go on to category three. And this is where we get. I don't. I'm trying to figure out where Congress gets some of these things, these ideas. But uh, here, here it goes. Surviving spouses who remarried after the age of 57. Where did they get 57? I don't know. Or older. The remarriage doesn't have to be terminated. So this third category covers surviving spouses who remarry after turning 57 and whose claim for survivor benefits was pending on or filed after 2004. January of, of 2004. Now, you don't have to have ended your marriage to be eligible. They can remain remarried and still be entitled to certain benefits like uh, DIC, Home Loans, CHAMP VA, and Dependent uh, Educational Assistance. Okay, There are different rules for surviving spouses covered under this Category 3 depending on whether the remarriage occurred prior to December 19th of 2003 or after that date. Again, why? You see how complicated these people, Congress, make things. Okay, So the surviving spouse who remarried at age 57 or older and on or after the December uh, 2003 date are eligible to receive survivor benefits as long as their claim was pending on or filed after January 1 of 2004. However, if you are a spouse who was at least 57 and you remarried before December 16th of 2003, you can't benefit today because you would have had to have filed for the benefit within one year and the years up. So again, just like category one, this category three is very limited also. So just winding up for this uh, category three, if you're a surviving spouse, okay, you're not entitled to these benefits if you fail to file an initial application for benefits by December 15th, 2004. Now, I guess it's possible that your application hasn't been ruled upon but uh, highly unlikely. So here's the last category, category four. So a surviving spouse who remarried at age 55 or older, the remarriage doesn't need to be terminated. This category covers surviving spouses who remarried after turning 55 and whose claims for survivor benefits was pending on or filed after January 1 of 2021. For remarried spouses covered under Category 4, the effective date for the benefits can be no earlier than January 5th of 2021. In addition, just know that remarried surviving spouses whose benefits were previously severed because they remarried between the ages of 55 and 57 may have their benefits reinstated effective January the 5th, 2021. And lastly, surviving spouses covered under this category four uh, can stay married and they're eligible for DIC and CHAMP VA benefits. However, they're not entitled to uh, education benefits, dependency education assistance, DEA benefits. So, hey folks, Dale Davidson. Hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a lot. Hey, check out this video. VA benefits for spouses. Can you get remarried? Can you get remarried? Sure. Would it affect my VA benefits? Possibly. So uh, just be careful. Until next time, you'll be blessed.